Good afternoon, NorCal Carters. And this afternoon, we have a very, very special guest, Gary Carlton. Say hello. Hello, everybody. So uh, for those of you uh, that are new to this podcast, if you are listening to the podcast via NorCal Carters uh, or the Spreaker app, which is S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com, search NorCal Carters. Uh, you could actually chat live with us. Uh, you won't be able to call in right at this moment, but you can chat live. And if you go to Facebook, NorCal Carters, I posted a link. Um, so Gary, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you had a you had an okay week in Las Vegas. Where do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know. I still uh, surely haven't uh, slowed down. I mean, it's good. So there's always so much to do after these races, also, and I'm actually getting ready to support um, my my dealer down in SoCal, Formula Works. Uh, they have an LAKC race. This coming week, so I'll actually be going down there Tuesday. So I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row uh, before I leave here for the for the week. Now, is that their season finale down there? No, they actually have two more races. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to go to the one in December. I think there's one like right before Christmas weekend. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make that one, but uh, for sure, this is going to be the penultimate uh, round here. So. We'll be we able to support those guys. He's got quite a bit of guys that are coming to that and just kind of build on the momentum that on their win that they had with Jake Drew in the Rock GP class. Uh, so just, just try to show the customers that, you know, our dealers do receive factory support when when necessary. And I think with their, he's going to have quite a bit of drivers on the GFC products and he's going to start pushing the GFC product quite a bit harder now that, uh, you know, they proved to the through the world that it can win nationally with the tag program. So be there to help them, you know, with all their customers being it be driver coaching, uh, chassis tuning, or just being there for more supports. So just to bring everybody up to speed that, that are not familiar with what Gary's talking about. Um, he's not talking about LAKC championship. He's talking about the rock, the Rio, uh, that just took place last week. Uh, Jake Drew was crowned the national champion in the uh, Vortex GP class. And, yeah, that really has to be exciting, one for you, then also for uh, Tony and Travis and those guys down in SoCal. Um, Because let's not sugarcoat it. There's another green chassis out there that is usually very dominant in that tag class. And um, you showed your product can, can not just hang with them but beat them. Yeah, no, it was a big victory for us. I mean, being that Jake was the only GFC entered in the whole, I think it was over 30, I and mean, there's 30-something drivers in, in that category, and he was the only GFC entered um, to take victory. It was, you know, a big deal for us as our first, as a brand, the GFC brand, the first national victory. Um, I think even for the Formula Works team, it was one of their biggest victories that they've had Um as, as a team, and I think one of the bigger victories even Jake Drew has um, experienced. So, you know, big, big, big first for, for everyone involved. And also, we can't forget uh, Sweet Tech Racing Engines was the power plant for, for Drew. Uh, and I think that's, you know, one of their bigger tag bigger victories that they've experienced as, as an engine company. So, really neat to, you know, have that program come together and be in that this was only the second ever race Jake Drew drove on the GSC chassis in the first race with the GP engine, the Rock GP cat, um, format. I mean, we, we did one race that down in the pro cart where it was a huge pro cart event uh, in Buttonville, their finale with the KA 100 engine format. And he got second by literally less than, I mean, I think it was like quarter of a 10th. I mean, it was one of those drag races to the line um, in Buttonwill, although we lost out on, he got second on that, but take victory here at, you know, basically the biggest national race of the year on our cart. Powered by Sweet Tech is, you know, really special for me and I think special for everyone that's involved. Yeah, no, it's, uh, 
it, it, I saw it on the um, on the Rock the uh, Rio or Rock Cup USA <clears throat> Facebook page um, where it was Jake Drew was the winner, and you know it did look kind of odd, you know, having uh, a GFC chassis with a Sweet Tech sticker on it on the front of a tag class. I mean, normally. Uh, for the past couple of years, GFC and Sweet Tech have, uh, I would lack a better word, dominated the shifter category. So it's really nice to see that your stuff transitioned extremely well to the tag classes. Um, and yeah, I mean, just what a really neat of what a really neat accomplishment. And that wasn't just your only win or podium of the weekend, was it? No, uh, we were, you know, we had great success in, in the shifter category also. Um, for whatever reason, these big national races at Rock to Rio, we've been able to show very well uh, the last three editions of it, the last three years. I mean, over the last three years, we've put in three different drivers onto the podium, uh, taken two wins with two different drivers. So we've always been ex- extremely strong and always had a, a chance for victory. Um, at the event and this year we hooked up with Oliver Askew uh, the driver that's been you know in my or I guess in his karting career I've been a fairly big part of it when I used to work at OGP over in Florida I met Oliver and I was his mechanic and mentor for about a year and a half he actually lived in my apartment and before I went back driving to Europe uh, Oliver spent quite a bit of time with me and was developed a really good relationship I mean, almost like a little brother to me and me acting as a big brother to him. And we always kind of joked uh, and I always said, you know, I'm going to have my own go-kart. I'm going to have my own go-karting team. And when you're off uh, doing big things, you're going to have to come back and, and race for my team and we'll do a, do a race together. And here we are, you know, seven years after we, we had said all that with my own go-karting team and, uh, go-karting brand brand and um, under the track magic banner squad dri- squad and track magic banner we put together a deal for it to have all of our race this race and um, it wasn't to my surprise that he was fast right out of the box I mean he's in IndyCar for a reason he's in, in uh, you know made it that far on, on on the budget that he has which is none I mean he did everything off scholarships and and finding sponsorship um and made it all the way to the top tier of motorsports. You don't do that, not being a talented driver. And I mean, he, he took the weekend in stride. I mean, he was fastest in qualifying one, two of his heat races. I don't think he was less than second or third in the timesheets all weekend and drove a perfect final and, and took the victory. And then I don't think we can go without, you know, mentioning uh, Hunter Pickett, who honestly was probably the fastest driver all weekend just had a, a, I mean, a poor qualifying effort. I mean, he was a half tenth off of the pole position, which puts him put him in fifth, which just shows the depth of the field that of the fifth or forty five or fifty drivers there was in, in the category. That half tenth off puts you in fifth place shows a uh, half of a tenth. Ha- half was of a tenth fifth put place. Fifth, fifth was fifth place. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that's a duck and a fart. In the heat rate. <laughs> yeah, uh, in the heat races, he did well, and he set himself up uh, to put him on the inside of the third row um, for the final. Didn't get the best start, so it's one of those things. W- without a-, a good start, he uh, fell back to fifth or even maybe sixth. I can't even remember, and uh, I think it was actually sixth. And he drove his way up to third. And when getting through the first couple guys, um, be it they were blocking or just didn't have the pace in the beginning, he, when he got into the fourth position, he was three seconds back and he just pounded out some amazing laps. Um, and I think, I don't think he got the fastest lap of the race, but him and Enzo Prevost, who did have the fastest lap of the race following Hunter, were turning laps, you know, quite a bit quicker than the leaders and he drove up. Drove up to uh, third and he did a, I mean, an amazing last lap pass. Surprised um, Ron White, Trevor, Aiden O'Neill, you know, the second to last, third to last corner and, and, and was able to get by him and, uh, and take the last step of, step of the podium. But 
be it if Hunter was starting on the front row or got a better start, it could have been a completely different race, and we could have seen Hunter on the on the top step of the podium because he showed uh, very many times that his speed was you know, quite a bit better than the, the front two guys. Yeah, I, when I was down there, and I think combined, uh, I watched one one shifter heat race out of the whole week, uh, just because we were we were busy in the in the mini class, and. Um, I was actually watching on the app at the airport and I was watching Hunter's times and the first couple of laps, it's like, ah, oh, he was there. And then all of a sudden he was about three tenths faster than anybody, uh, behind him in front of him. And I was looking at the app going, man, Hunter might drive this thing to the front. And, um, I, I really wish I could have watched that race because that would have been really exciting to see live. Um, the, the Rock Cup app is pretty cool as far as with the times and everything and how it does like kind of that, that leader bar when the, they're coming around for that next lap. But that had to be fun to watch um, for two reasons. I mean, you had you had one driver on the track magic being Oliver out in the front, and, and he led from flag to flag, didn't he? No, he did not actually. Oh, he um, I mean, he, he, no, he was overtaken by Myers. I think after like five, six laps, if I'm not mistaken, um, Myers definitely had a little bit more pace than Oliver and everybody else um, at the beginning of the race. But then I think Oliver took the lead with maybe seven, eight laps to go, or maybe more. I can't remember now, and uh, drove away, kind of drove away from Myers at the very end of the race to seven tenths of a second lead. Um, and I think it, sh- it showed to uh, our guys uh, were probably set up more, especially Oliver and Hunter showed pace at the end of the race more than they did at the beginning of the race. And we knew it was going to be a long race, uh, 25 laps. And obviously we knew we had the pace to, to run up front. Um, so we definitely took the gamble and wanted to make sure because with the draft and everything in the, in the wind, we knew it was going to be really hard to get away from people, especially in the beginning with everyone on new tires and wanted to have their, their weapons sharp, so to speak at the very end of the race. So if they needed to, you know, battle or um, needed a little bit extra and, and they both showed that they did have that by the end of the race, turning some of the best lap times of the race at the end. Yeah, no, it was, um, it, it was almost agonizing just to watch it from the app. And uh, I'm an outsider. I, I'm not, I'm not under the tent. I'm not a mechanic for your team or anything else. Um, but you and I go way back and you have a really neat group of guys under that tent. Uh, and in that track magic, when you start entering the squadra track magic group into the, into the mix, have you seen the video of LaPointe? Yeah. Yeah. I saw it. Um, I mean, it was pretty cool to see his emotion and how much emotion, he had, you know, with, with this, and you know, I think, uh, I think it's cool. You know, I mean, I remember we all do this sport, you know, for the, the passion of it, for the emotion of it, and we all know we don't, no, none of us get really rich off this. So, you know, it's a, it's a passion-based sport, and and we were all, we were all happy. I mean, I was extremely happy with the, with the results and taking wins in two, both the premier senior categories is, is not easy, especially in, in a tag um, world at the moment. So, you know, how it's a huge day for, for my team, for my company, for my brand, for my dealers, for Rainey Pearson, uh, from Sweet Tech Racing Engines. I think he won, I mean, won numerous categories. Um, so and to have, you know, we obviously have a huge, strong close relationship with sweet tech racing engines and i i attribute a lot of my success you know be, being it help with development of my product and obviously supplying us with the best horsepower possible um it takes you know it always takes three four parts to to win these big races and and sweet tech is always there to, to give us the best that he can provide and and we can't thank him enough well you guys have been putting in the effort um, for the past couple of years, uh, even during this year, you know, COVID, um, yeah, I'm lucky enough to see 
that you know how much effort you and your team actually put in where uh, you know a lot of the, a lot of the teams in the area kind of didn't make a, a huge effort to go try to find a track and um you and your team made it happen to go find open tracks and get g- keep your guys in shape and that's what it takes and um just knowing rainy he's relentless uh so he's not going to give up and you know he'll match the effort anybody puts into their program yeah yeah i know it's a huge part of our program obviously um if you don't have a good chassis, you can have the best engine in the world. You won't go anywhere. You, you could have the best chassis in the world, and if you don't have a good engine, you're not going to go anywhere. So it's uh, it's been a really good you know marriage. I mean, I've used Sweet Tech when I in my racing career for many many years, and there's there's one thing that I won't ever change, and that's my engine program with Sweet Tech. Uh, I just have the trust in Rainy and. And he, he keeps on delivering year after year for us um, in, in many, many different categories. I mean, he helped us also win a um, win a, a cadet championship this year with Nico Serafati in the Challenge of Americas in the micro category. So, I mean, he's helped us win and in, in, helped all three models of our GSC branded chassis win, you know, big events this year and and we don't have any any reason to to change or go anywhere else but Sweet Tech. Yeah, and you've been on a roll for the past couple of years. I mean, how many, uh, not including your dealers, we'll get to your dealers, but uh, just for GFC, how many drivers do you have under the tent in Vegas? Oh, we had 16 drivers, which was a, a big upswing from the year before. The year before, we only had six. Um, so we had 16 drivers there. And underneath the official tent, and then we also had ten drivers under the Formula Works tent, which is the SoCal one of our SoCal dealers, Tony Sierguza and Travis Serving, have been doing an outstanding job. And obviously, the, um, Jake Drew was underneath that tent racing with them, um, and they they've been doing a great job of getting the product out there, especially the SS31 tag chassis. They had many drivers in the k100 category a few drivers in the cadet micro category and then also they had jake drew in the gp and also john crow in the masters shifter category who finished just outside the top five um positioning in the sixth position in the master shifter category so they've been pushing hard they um been doing a great job helping us with the development of the carts uh, in SoCal, and uh, we couldn't be more happy with our decision to, to go with them and continue the relationship with them. And like I said, I'm pushing hard to show my support to the Formula Works brand and team, and I'm going to be going, spending the whole week next week with them, working with their drivers, working with the mechanics, and, dri- and help, showing their support in the driving side and in the technical side of our of our carts. So what are some of the highlights uh, from the, besides the win? I mean, you, you had, uh, again, Jake Drew in the, in the tag class. Um, Oliver asked you with, on the track magic in the shifter class. Hunter Pickett third in the shifter class. What are, what are two or three highlights from just the Rock the Rio event in general that uh, you could share with us? Whether it was on the track, off the track, just something that stands out. Um, something that stands out would be William Ferguson. Uh, never tested our cart before. Showed up to the biggest race of the year. Um, we all know William Ferguson's budget is not the highest, so we were able to get him on a go kart um, through the pickets. But uh, I mean, to think Hunter Pickett gave one of his go karts to use for a driver that is competing against him um, is is pretty cool and shows how big of heart and how much Hunter Pickett and the Pickett racing team wants, you know, people to succeed and, and wants the, the good of karting and help people out in the NorCal area. Um, he was running seventh in the final passing for sixth. I personally didn't see what happened. I guess it was um, maybe just one of those racing deals. There was a little bit of contact. He caught the inside barrier trying to squeeze in there and um, 
he wasn't able to, to continue and to think that, you know, he was able to, be, you know, be almost in the top five on a go-kart that he'd never tested before, showed up and did that well in one of the most competitive shifter kart fields that I've seen in probably the last 10 years, to be honest, is an attribute of his talent, one, and I think an attribute of, of the team and BMO to work together with him and get him up to speed quickly with the other drivers. Um to be that competitive in, in that field, I think, is is a huge accomplishment. Um, I think another one would be Q1 Tandon, first race from the go kart, running in times inside the top ten all weekend. And people would say, oh, you know, inside the top ten, what's that say? Well, the top ten is literally maybe only a tenth and a half off a leader. <laughs> in, in this case, being the uh, the field was so competitive. Um, so just those young drivers showing their speed maybe not seeing the results with, you know, luck involved and starting in the back and um, being, you know, one bad heat race was, was big. Um, Julian Sanchez in the micro category was a huge success in my opinion. People would say, you know, a driver finishing 16th or I think 16th or 17th out of a 30 car field wouldn't be that big of an achievement, but being that Julian, this was probably Julian's only, I would say, fourth or fifth race ever <laughs> coming out of kid cart and going to a huge race like that first ever national race to have that kind of speed and, you know, race craft and everything, I think shows how strong our young driver development program is. Once he got on that, we've been doing, you know, lead follows mock races and Dixon and um, he really has excelled and showed his, you know, his strength um, at a very young age of seven like I said, you know, only fifth or sixth race out of kid cart. I think it's a huge accomplishment for him. And I think, you know, we got to, we can't down the fact of what Rock Cup USA did. I mean, how many people, how many organizations, I mean, had, they had everything, absolutely everything going against them. And they pulled off an incredible event. And I think if not, every team owner or competitor hasn't thanked them personally, they should, because that is a huge accomplishment. I think as a brand and as, and as a team, GFC, we, we rely on races like that to showcase our product, to develop our product and to keep, continue our business. And for them to give us that stage and be able to, to do that race and pull off a race like that, is is massive for our industry, matches for every person that's in the industry, being it brands or race teams or products. I mean, they, I mean, and you, I wouldn't say saved karting, but I mean, I think if there was no Vegas event, there would have been a lot of people that would have ended the year kind of on a mundane note. I'm sure everyone that was at this race even if they had good results or bad, they're probably already gearing up for next year's event or, you know, get, get that little taste in the mouth. Like, you know, yeah, okay. We, we, we want to keep going. And when there's races like this, I think, you know, everyone looks forward to that race in Vegas and, and they made it happen. So Garrett Potter and his crew deserve all the credit in the world, all the thanks in the world. And, you know, I think any, any person that was at an event would you know, say the same exact thing. You, you see it all over Facebook at the moment. Every team that puts out a post about the race is thanking them because we all rely on on races like this and events like this and organizations. So for them to stick out their neck and, and not necessarily worry about their bottom line, but worry about everybody else's bottom line shows that Rock and Vortex have the greater interest of everybody and and more more so than their own interest yeah i and you know being you know i was traveling down there i you know, i had my suitcase that's it i, I the, the tools were on the trailer all i had was my suitcase i didn't have 16 drivers that i'm trying to organize around and i, I i'm not gonna lie i the week before the week before the event, I knew Garrett wasn't giving up. I, I knew he wasn't quitting on trying to have this event. But 
about a week before the event, I'm thinking, man, there's there's other things that could happen that are outside of any of our control. And, uh, you know, all the teams, all the drivers, all the families that decided to take that commitment to go down there, it a part of it was a leap of faith and just that dedication of, hey, if he's going to try to make it happen, we're going to be there to support him. And uh, I think the final count, what was it, right around 310 entries or something? Um, that's, I, I'm pretty sure that's the biggest event they've ever had. And then you take into account this year and how crappy this year has been. That is just a huge accomplishment. Um, and like you said, many I of think, us live I, yeah, these I think, events. Yeah, I think their total number was actually a little bit down, maybe by like 10, 15 of last year. Okay. We all have to remember that there was zero, like almost zero contingent from South America. Canada was extremely low. Obviously, no European contingent. So, yeah. I, I mean, that's three hundred and ten of of American drivers, yeah. which is unheard of at the moment. And, and, and you know, especially in the year that, and I mean, to see fifty shifter carts. In one category, we're not talking about masters or anything else. Um, I mean, that's that's unheard of nowadays. And the competitiveness, and I mean, there was drivers I think that were in the same t- less than a tenth off, and they were like in eighth place. I mean, that never happens in shifter kart racing. And uh, I mean, it's it just shows that the program of rock is what I mean. The people have spoken. It, it's good. It's people like it. They, they like the demeanor of the people. And I mean, they deserve all the credit in the world. They've done a, a fantastic job. Yeah, no, it was good to see. I mean, it was, um, I said it on my earlier podcast today, I did my uh, weekly updates for NorCal Carters and everything at the event. I think everything at the event that Garrett had control over went exceptionally well you know we had kind of that surprise in uh you know with the fuel in the fuel barn where we had to do the par for may style of taking your gas tanks out of the cart um not a big deal but when you're not planning for it it's like it's just kind of that hiccup right um and then having to mix the fuel on the grounded steel plates and all that stuff it's like okay whatever that that was really about it I mean, as far as a nuisance, uh, we all knew we had to wear face masks um, going down there. The weather is out of everybody's control. Um, it wasn't that an interesting time on Saturday night. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the very, whole very, weather thing. very stressful. Yeah, very, very, very stressful. I mean, I got a, I got a hand to it that little to get my wristband literally took me not even 30 seconds. I mean, showed up for the registration. Phone, yeah. little registration pass so like i think everyone at first i mean we all probably had a little a little bit of trouble figuring out the app at first but then once we all figured it out i mean that was amazing the oh line, you should have heard me on my couch it. i was cussing and swearing because i couldn't figure out how to scan my id and yeah i was i was doing i did the same and <laughs> i mean once you do it once then you kind of feel like you feel a little kind bit of stupid. <laughs> bad about it. Kind of bit, yeah, you feel a little bit stupid. You're like, oh, okay. Like, I get it. Like, all right, all right. And I think, you know, it's always those, those new things, right? I think we're creatures of habit. Yeah. We, um, but once we figured it all out, I mean, it was, that was great. I mean, the check-ins at the, at the track were great. I mean, handed off to them. I mean, being with the weather, Rock had rain tires there for everyone for sale. I mean, they just do it right. I mean, they do things right. They treat you well. Um, tech, if you have questions, they, they answer them. I mean, I just don't know. Yeah. But let, I mean, let's I, be honest. Here. If you're going to a national race and you don't have rain tires in your trailer, I, I don't care where you're going. I don't care if you're going. Well, we were in the desert. I, you need rain tires. I'm sorry. It, that's a part. That's a cost of national level racing. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, even though they had a, a set for each driver, I mean, it was 
they do things right. They make it easy for the customers. They make it easy for the dealers. They make it, they just do, do things right. In my opinion, I'm sure there's many people out there. They think they got a wrong call there. I mean, there's probably a lot, some people that are angry at them, but at least my experience, um, and you know, I'm sure there's probably people that sitting out there going, well, you won, of course you're happy, but there was years I went there and I haven't won and I've been treated only, only well. I mean, by the officials, by tech, by everyone that's involved. So I can't, I can't think of enough to rock for what they did. And um, I think everyone, you know, owes a little pat on the back to them for getting that race off. And um, I mean, not giving anything away. I kind of overheard some of the plans for 2021 and, um, I'm really excited. So you can you can bet Team GSC will be there in full first next year. Oh, I think I think a lot of teams are going to be there. Uh, there's a lot of teams there this year. I mean, again, considering the circumstances of everything, um, it's you know by by many accounts it was the event that shouldn't have happened. Um, and like I said, my experience down there was nothing but positive when it came to uh, how Rock Cup USA administered everything. Um, I think I thought they did a bang up job. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I should have Garrett Potter on later this week as well uh, to kind of get his reflection on the event. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that, but anything else that stands out in your, in your memory uh, of the weekend? Um, that, that I'm probably going to stay at the gold coast or cheaper hotels because they're a lot cheaper than the Rio or all these <laughs> nicer hotels. And I'm going to save a lot of money. Um, a little bit bummed that I didn't get to go to the ping ping pong Chinese restaurant there. Cause I guess it's one of the 10 best in the nation. I, I like, I, I like really? Chinese food. Yeah. Um, I got to thank the Pickets, the Pickett family. We went to Carmine's Sunday after the race. That was a be- beautiful night, beautiful dinner that we had all together. Um, and just, I can't thank my team of mechanics and drivers and everyone. I mean, it was just the camaraderie. It was really good, really good vibe underneath the tent all week. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was hard. It was hard. I mean, managing 16 drivers. I, I did have Wes Boswell come in. It was great having Wes Boswell there. Um, he kind of looked over the the younger kids in younger categories um, and did a fantastic job. It was great to have Wes there again. We've, we've all been missing him. Um, and we all know that the expertise of, of Wes and the experience is second to none. So, um, I mean, we really had a powerhouse team put together with our mechanics and and engineers and, and people that helped there and coaches. So, I mean, just solid team. Uh, many many great memories. Memory great inside jokes. Um, I mean, just great, great, great weekend overall. Besides even just the results, uh, a lot of stress, obviously, um, a good stress. Um, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, yeah, I mean, it was stressful when it rained, but we were able to make sure everyone was on the right page or on the right tires. Uh, Mike Rivera came down a week in advance. Our con- dealer at Connecticut spent some time with us here at, at, at GSC headquarters. That was really great having him around. And, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, it seemed like everyone was really happy to be at the event seemed like everyone was really happy when the event got, you know, made it through all the days and we weren't shut down. I mean, and it seemed, I mean, Garrett was in there and he had so many things there that, I mean, it was almost better than what you'd see like at a mall or anything else. I mean, there was hand sanitizing stations. They were checking your uh, everyone's temperature while going in. I mean, he had him and his team did things that I don't think anyone 
else I mean that we've seen do. They just did an amazing job, and I think it was pretty cool. And it kind of shows when you know someone says, "Hey, you can't do that." It, with the right mindset and the right people, you can you can prove that impossible is it possible, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a testament to what um, you know Garrett and his crew did. But it's, again, I, I'm going to say it again. It's also a testament to the teams that made the effort to go down there because it's not. It's not easy to to plan for one, two, or three people, much less sixteen or twenty. And you have to be thinking at the back of your head: we need a contingent plan in case this thing gets canceled. Um, and you know, luckily, no one had to deal with any of that. Uh, I made the comment to Andy Saisman on, I think it was Thursday. Um, I go, I go, you guys did it, and then Andy. He goes, well, I didn't do anything. This is not my series. And um, can we at least, he goes, can we at least wait till Sunday before we say it? And I go, well, I'll say it again after qualifying because then the event's official. Um, but yeah, not even, I didn't, I, there was no whisper of the event getting shut down or anything. Um, the only thing I thought was goofy that was COVID related had nothing to do with the event. It's just being, being at the hotel and I, I mentioned this earlier this morning. I saw Greg Bell and Danny Formal at the blackjack table. And I walked up to him just to chat. And then the pit boss comes over and shoes me away and, like, points to their sign of social distancing, blah, blah, blah. And you can only have three people at a table. And I, I, kinda, I walked away. It's like, ah, that's a bummer because that's part of the Vegas experience. You, you socialize with people. You talk to them. Um, it, it, that whole other side of networking that sometimes happens at these big races that definitely, uh, th that was a lot different. Still there. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, <laughs> you're multitasking. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, It's all right. I, I do the same thing. It's I'll, I'll be reading my notes and then I zone out for a second. Um, yeah, no, I had to text someone back here. But yeah, I mean that was the only thing that I thought that was COVID related that was just a little goofy. Was just, eh, the hotel scene wasn't like it usually is in Vegas. It, um, but actually, talking about that, I I was actually really concerned about the Master Shifters class. Um, because there was the word going around, it's like, eh, there's probably not going to be a very good turnout for the Master Shifters because it's, um, you know, a lot of the activities and things are going to be shut down. I, I know the Master guys, they, they like to go out and do their nice dinners and, and hang out. You know, they're, you know, socialites, if you will. Um, and the Master Shifter class was pretty stout. I mean, it was a good, good turnout for that class. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, I guess it's all relative to um, who wanted to go and didn't. And uh, I mean, I guess I wasn't too worried about it. I knew the, the entries were going to be good. And I, I mean, I've seen all the guys, at least from here up in NorCal, they were all going. So I had to assume, you know, if they're going, all the other guys are going to be wanting to go too. So Yeah. And you had some master drivers under your tent as well. Yeah, yeah, we had. Uh, I mean, we had Mike Rivera come all the way out from Connecticut. So, yeah. it, um, it was great seeing Mike. I I haven't seen that guy in a long time. It was really nice seeing him. And then you have yeah, no, Mike's a great I, guy. Mike's a great guy. He's a legend in the sport. Um, he didn't have the result I think he wanted, but by the end he started getting around pretty good. So yeah, uh, just a little bit too late. I, he's just a great ambassador for the sport. Very, very much so. Very much so. Yeah, I mean, it's, the people on the, no, the on the East Coast are going, yeah, yeah, he is. He's a great ambassador. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, how do you want to wrap this thing up? Is there any final thoughts you have? I mean, you want to – how do you want to do it? Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, 
I just want to thank everyone that was that was involved that helped us, you know, get to where we were. It helped us during the weekend, before the weekend, after the weekend. I mean, it's obviously not a, you know, not one man can do do it all, and it's it's a team team effort, and you know, everyone worked flawlessly and and did a great job. And and thank everyone for trust and support the GSC brand. Um, you know, it's, it's really it's really heartwarming to to see. You know, people that that like our brand, that run our brand, and you know, it seems like we've been in business for a long time, but in reality, I mean, this is, we're on two years, and we're getting dealers, we're, we're winning national races in different categories, and having great results, and it's kind of like been a little bit of a whirlwind at times, but, um, you know, it's, we're having a lot of fun, so I can't thank everyone enough, and we'll continue, try to continue to keep it keep it going and the best we can. And I think, you know, we have some things in store for 2021 that are going to, are going to help us grow. And, um, yeah, I think there's a lot, lot, lot still to, to come. So let's wrap this thing up with a sales pitch. So what I mean by that is number one, your website is GFC carding.com. You're also on social media, GFC carding. Um, but Vegas, end of the year, chassis blowouts. What you got? I mean, what do you for that local guy that's looking to to upgrade his his equipment? What do you have available right now? And I know I'm we catching you off guard that. with this one. <laughs> no, but no. Let, let's I plug do, it. Let's let's a, give yourself a sales pitch. Yeah, we do have a few shifter cards for sale. Use shifter cards. Um, we have one one race old shifter cart up for grabs. We have a couple two three race old shifter carts up for grabs, and then um, one race old tag chassis, and and then a couple race old tag chassis up for grabs. Fortunately, no cadets, um, no used cadets at the moment. But um, yeah, we do have a few carts up for grabs. Um, they're going fast, so please contact us before before they're gone, and then. If you're looking for something new, we also have um, a big inventory of, of the 2021 carts that are the same as 2020s. Uh, to be completely honest, there's no no changes. We uh, haven't changed anything uh, from the start of the year, other than um, there's a different grip on the steering wheel. So um, we do have those in stock at the moment, and um, yeah, I mean we're we're open for business. I think the only time we're going to maybe close down is for, it's for Christmas and and thanksgiving but um there's, we'll be open for business um throughout the, the winter months and then we'll be getting ready to go to florida winter tour challenge of the americas um and then we'll obviously we'll be supporting the sonoma rock series uh, um if it's still called sin zero next year and then uh, also we'll be looking to do some kpx races and um supporting all the the rock fest races and obviously rock the rio Nice. Very nice. You know, I got to ask this. It just, as you were talking about, you know, 2021 chassis wise, uh, same cart. I mean, it's, I know you're, I know you, I know you very well. You're always trying to improve things, but why, why change what's working so well? <laughs> um, but well, it, it's you one have of those, one cart it's one of those things. Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah. It's always one of those things. I mean, Yes, I mean we're always developing. We're always trying to find new solutions, new ways to, you know, to better ourselves. Um, a lot of it has to do also with the tire compounds that we use here in the U.S. If they have changed, I mean, obviously this year, the Evenco had changed. It, um, there's rumors now the Rock tire is going to change. So we're always trying to keep on top of uh, the tires that are coming here in the U.S. and using the tires that. Uh, there are the tires that the series are using and uh, try to develop our carts to the best of our abilities for those, those sets of tires and, and track conditions and everything. But, um, I mean, we still haven't changed our shifter cart uh, since we debuted it. Um, it's been going really well so far. And I think we will see some changes after 2021, um, just some upgrades of parts and maybe a few d different uh additions to the the frame itself but i've just been one of those guys i don't want to be the 
car company that comes out with something new and improved every year to to basically turn around and tell my dealers, yeah, all that stock that you bought two months ago, it's no good. Here's the new and new and latest greatest thing. I, I think, you know, a true development of a, a good chassis takes a very long time. And um, over the last, since we've debuted our carts back in the end of 2018, we've been slowly get, gathering data and seeing where the trends are going with the tires and everything. And, when we come out for the new homologation period in 2022, we could there could we could see some uh, some new additions uh, of our carts. But as of right now, all of the, the the testing we've done, we've we've gone on and said that you know the carts that we currently have now are are the best product that we can produce at this moment, and uh, we'll continue to to run with those carts. So so there was one cart out. There was one GFC chassis out there. Your normal livery is uh, black and white, uh, what, you know, one side's black, one side's white, kind of a, a mirror image, if you will. Um, there was one card out there. I think it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was Jake Drew, but it was blue and it was metallic. Yeah, so all those Formula Works drivers had that, this blue and metallic um, graphic kit, and that's, you know, for the Formula Works team. They're trying to identify their, themselves, you know, as their own team, and which I am fully supportive of. I think, you know, if I could have something like the OTKs have, in the sense that we see many OTK teams go out there with, you know, an OTK go kart, but with their own team branded go karts. I mean, there's the bit one of the biggest reasons why. I do GFC and did my own brand of the carts is if I'm going to work my butt off for 18 hours a day, I want my name on it. And as Formula Works wants to do the same for themselves, they put a lot, a lot of time and effort in the development of their team and, and taking the GFC product and, and using that as, as their chassis of choice. I mean, why, why wouldn't they want to promote their team and graphics along with the GFC brand in their own way? And I think it's a really cool, cool what they did. It seems to be getting a lot of traction. A lot of people li- like it. Some people don't. Um, for the people that that run with Formula Works, I mean, they're just giving them another option if they wanted to run the GSC graphics or the Formula Works graphics. And I think it's a great, great addition. Um, when we have our big team picture, I guess closing closing it out. And the one great thing that I, I came away from the weekend is having you know the track magic cart that Oliver had won on, uh, Jake Drews with the, the Formula Works graphics, and then Hunter Pickett getting third with the, the normal factory GFC graphics all lined up with the team members behind us and, you know, all cheering and stuff. It, it's really cool. Uh, I don't have the printed picture yet, but once I get it the printed picture, I can guarantee it's going to be my favorite photo in my office and our growing collection of team photos and and victories is starting to grow, and I take extreme pride in that. And those pictures are are priceless to me. So it's really really cool to see it, see the people that how the team's grown from our first victory in 2008 to having three carts there and three times as many people in the team photo is is really special to me. Yeah, the other photo you have to get blown up is uh, Oliver holding Sunny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That that was Very a that was a good photo as well. It just uh it, it just captured their the joy in their face. Yeah, we all we I mean a trophy is a trophy, but I think everyone remembers, you know, the joy they feel um of winning the race. I mean, a trophy is just a piece of plastic or glass or whatever the trophy might be, but for me, the the, uh, the photos are, are everything to me because you can see the emotion and it kind of takes you back to that time of, and makes you think about the emotion that you had at that certain time. Yeah, and you know what? I think that's all the trophy does. You, you look at a trophy and you don't think about the plastic part of it. You think about the memory that goes along with it. Yeah, the, the amount of sacrifice, the amount of work, the amount of stress that went into getting that and... Um, yeah, like I said, very, very, very happy, very pleased, very honored to be, you know, the, the leader of this brand and, and I have all the people that are behind me and been supporting me. It's it's really humbling. 
Well, congratulate, uh, congratulations, congratulations on uh, you know Rock the Rio 2020. Uh, Jake Drew, national champion, tag senior. Oliver Askew, national champion, rock shifter senior. And Hunter Pickett, third place in the rock shifter senior class. Uh, you did a great job. Keep it up, and uh, I think that's how we'll wrap up the interview. All right, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, all, everything you guys do for us at NorCal Cars, and uh, hope to see everyone soon at the track. Uh, like I said, fortunately, I'm going to cheat on you guys and go down to SoCal next week, but um, after that, uh, I'll be, you'll probably see us doing quite a bit of testing up in Sonoma, Dixon, and you know, all the tracks around here in NorCal getting ready for the 2021 season. That sounds great. I'm going to hit in, but uh, hold tight for a second. 